Hello, I'm Martin Fenska and welcome to the first episode of Let's Try Humankind. So finally I found enough time to play Humankind for a bit. Uh, it's still an open beta. It's not even like a full open beta. We only have like short windows to test the game uh, here and there. The current window ends in like five days. So we oh, our, I only have time for a short series. Uh, there's a lot in the game that I didn't have time to test properly. Uh, but I hope I've learned enough to make a decent short series, like an introduction of the game. If you are a fan of uh, the 4X Civilization-like games, uh, you probably know about Humankind and won't really need much of an introduction. So I'll try to focus on like the mechanics, maybe some comparison to mostly C5, because for me this is one of the games that might be like a proper successor to C5. Uh, I don't like C6. Uh, there is something that just doesn't sit well with me with that game. I don't know what it is, but I just don't like the game. So I'm still looking for the proper successor of C5. And this game might have the potential to become that. So let's uh, just jump in and we'll see how it looks like. And we'll just check the mechanics as we play. I had time to check the basics but of course a game like this needs a lot of time if you want to figure out uh like in all of the interdependencies in the game how a decision here affects the game like i don't know one era later how everything uh how everything works properly and i'm pretty sure there is still quite a few mechanics missing but there is enough to like play the game so let's see uh how this game looks like how it plays and what's implemented already okay let's uh start uh do we start there we go i hope it's not gonna take too long to load the game uh so how what's the what's the goal of the game we will take our tribe in the neolithic era and we will uh, like lead it throughout the ages. Currently there are five ages or eras in the game. Uh, there, it seems that in a full version there will be seven. And throughout these eras we are getting points, like fame points. And in the end the save with the most fame points wins the game. Uh, I'm not sure if there will be like a different victory conditions in the end. I guess if you like defeat everyone on the map, you just win no matter how many points you have. But currently the way I understand it, you are playing to get fame points and you are trying to have the most points at the end of the last era. Um... So that's like the the... The goal of the game, basically. Now, uh, let's uh, check the map. The same as Save or any of these games. We are playing on the Hex Grid. Uh, currently, there are no tools to, to like uh, customize map settings or anything. I'm pretty sure that every time you play the game, you play on the same map. But for the testing purposes, that's more than enough. Um... As usual, each tile has its yields, has its terrain. Uh, we have four basic yields, food production, science, and there is also one more that I forgot, gold. Mm, that's here. Plus, uh, there are three more. Is it three more? Two or three more? There is faith later. There is influence that's this one and there might be one more i'm not sure if, if there is three two or three later but i will get to that um so here we are starting at the start of neolithic era with uh, one hunting party uh our goal to progress to the next era is fulfill one of these goals so the first one is either to have five population so get five of these hunting parties uh, the other one is to get ten 
uh, knowledge basically uh, and the last one that's uh, to hunt three animals this one is probably most difficult because to hunt more anim to hunt animals you need more uh, hunting parties and the animals at this point are quite dangerous so if you want to do this, you probably have to force yourself to stop growing your tribe at four and then go hunting. So you will probably be always able to get to five much faster than getting these animals. It's like these two are kind of weird because on the way to this, you basically always fulfill this one. So I'm not sure if you can really progress through the Hunter Star like effectively, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what we are looking for currently are these points of interest. The Neolithic era is not really a proper like 4x experience. Here, really, you are really look, uh, like running around the map uh, looking for resources. But what I like about this is when you think about C5, you spawn somewhere around the map, you know nothing about it, you only see a few tiles around your spawning place, then maybe your units can move a little bit to check if there is maybe a better tile nearby. But you don't really know how the rest of the map looks like, if there are any resources just outside of your vision. And you have to settle as soon as possible, because if you don't, then you'll be behind the eyes. Here, you have one whole era where your goal is just to explore the map. So by the time you get to the next era, when you can finally found your cities, you have much better idea of how the map looks like, and you can make much more informed decisions about where you want to settle. Uh, so let's just start running around. And we will just check the basics. But again, if you like, if you've played forex games in the past, right now for a Neolithic era, there isn't really that much to uh, to explain. So let's pick up the food here. We got wild berries, and here we got plus five food. We need to get twenty food to get another hunting party. Uh, in this one group, we can have up to four hunting parties. Uh, after that, or after that, we can split the group at any point, so we can like keep growing. Mm. So now we end the turn. I'm gonna pick up this thing. I'm not sure if I need to do it, because we won't go for the Knowledge Star. But... May as well. I'm not sure if it like helps with research at the start of the next era. Uh, we oh, actually this this is useful. We got 15 influence. Influence. That's basically what you need to expand later. Because with every city that you found, the next city costs more influence. And also, for example, if you want to unlock wonders, like the big world wonders, uh, you have to pay to unlock them with influence. At least that's what I've seen so far. It's a pretty important resource. We just got 15 points. So I guess it was worth picking up that. Uh, how do how do we get it? Call uh, how do we want to call it? Curiosity, goody hunt, whatever. Then, we have a sanctuary here, that's another place that we definitely want to check. Can we get there? In one turn we can. Um, can we get the description? I'm not sure. But the way I understand it, these tiles are where uh, the animals are spawning. So here you can see one s or this sign, and the mammoth here has the same sign, so I guess that means that's where this mammoth spawned. Um, what are we gonna do with the sanctuary? I'm definitely not attacking the mammoth, we would die. But um, we can ransack these. And ransacking it gives us, should give us enough food to grow, I think. I think ransacking here gives 10 food, I mean 10, uh, 20 food, always. So let's find out. Yeah, there we go. We got plus 20, so we got another hunting party and five food for the next one uh, was carried over. Uh, here is the first AI. 
it's a scout or hunting party or whatever you want to call it. There is a deer that we are not interested in. It's just too dangerous fighting animals at this point. In the next era, it's much safer, so I'm just gonna leave all of the animals for the next era. In this era, we, we would be getting food by hunting animals. In the next era, we will be getting gold. And it's actually better, I think, to save the animals for gold, because <clears throat> uh, especially mammoths give quite a lot of gold, and you can speed up production thanks to that quite a bit. Uh, so let's keep going. There is another sanctuary. Here we have the news, so this is just a pop-up that we ransacked successfully that uh, sanctuary. And that we collected a curiosity. As for the movement, as you'd expect, based on the terrain, you have certain amount of like movement points and each tile has uh, like its own movement difficulty, so moving through a forest costs two points, uh, on planes it's one point. So no surprises there, here we have the, the uh, sanctuary, so let's ransack that one. And the turn, we'll get another hunting party and move here. This curiosity should give 10 food, so that will give us the fourth uh, hunting party. There we go. And now it's time to split up. So take one, take two. We keep going. I could attack a mammoth with four, but if you don't have room to, or for another hunting party, you just basically lose the resource. So I'll just keep going. I'm actually thinking about going with Thirty people. The problem is there are rivers everywhere, and I think during combat you have disadvantage if you are fighting from, from rivers. So I probably shouldn't fight mammoths here. Oh, when you are crossing rivers, you spend all of your points or your movement points. And I also. Thing that right now we don't have the ability to reinforce that if I moved let's say this guy here and the uh, or this group here and the other group attacked uh, I would only have one group in the fight they wouldn't reinforce each other I think reinforcements that's something you have to unlock later so I really don't want to risk this uh, losing a hunting party here would just slow down the progress to the next era and it's just not worth it Okay, here, because we are on the river, we are running along the river, we are not getting slowed down. What slows you down is when you are crossing a river. This way. Okay, there is more food, so let's pick that up. How much was that? Five? No, ten. And there is more food here. You yes, can run this... Oh, where is this? Yeah, this style. So that was what? Five. There should be a way how to gr uh, how to go to six hunting parties before getting to the next era. So basically, we will get the rest of the food for both uh, for both groups on the same turn. I'll try to do that. This way. I just need to find one more food yeah. curiosity. Yeah, I'm not attacking that mammoth. The game is Good. suggesting that, but I really shouldn't. There we go. I'm not sure if this is actually enough food. Hmm. Ah, oh, what the hell. I'll just see what happens. This is probably, yeah, this is only five. There is some knowledge there. Here we are only missing. I guess I... 
Well, the problem is I can't move from this tile down because there is like a, the mountain range and I can't. I have to move around. I don't think there was a way how to make this group pick up this curiosity and this one, the other one, at the same turn. So, whatever, I'll just pick this up, get to size 5 and progress to the next era. I would like to settle our first city in this episode, if possible. Okay, and when we spend all of the movement points, I think we will progress to the new era. So, here we go. Uh, we fulfilled one of the goals uh, that allows us to progress. So now the game tells us enter a new era. Uh, you have earned one era star and may now choose a new culture for the next era. Evolve your civilization with a new culture for the next era. So here we are going to pick a civilization that we're gonna evolve as. So compared to the civilization where you started as a leader of your choice, here you start as like undefined tribe and uh, you are developing your identity as you are progressing through the game also you don't become really that civilization you play in the style of the given civ so even though if we go for let's say egypt here our cities will have the names of uh, for egyptian cities but um, it doesn't feel like we are suddenly Egypt. We are playing, we are like builders and we are playing a save that would remind you of Egyptians. But it doesn't feel like in civilization where you are playing as, let's say, Ramesses and you are Egypt. You immediately have that like connection that Egypt that's me here I'm a civilization that develops the way that Egypt did something like that I'm not sure if it's like understandable what I mean but um, the reason why it doesn't feel the way how it feels in CIFI is also that as you are progressing through eras you don't have to stay the same sev you can change um, if, for example, you settle somewhere that looks like a, a good production uh, area, but then you realize that's not how you want to play or all of the regions around you would be better for, let's say, uh, culture or gold or something, you can switch to a different focus uh, if you want to play aggressively but find out that you are somewhere on an island alone and you don't have anybody to fight choosing a, a, a warmonger early doesn't mean that you are locked into that playstyle when it doesn't fit what you want to do later so you can evolve during the game you can change during the game based of, on the circumstances uh, so i really like this that your playstyle isn't decided Basically, even before the game begins. Um, I'm not sure if I should check everything. Maybe just quickly we'll go through all of these options. I will play as Egyptians. I kind of like their production focus. Not sure if it's good. I just like it. Usually, when I'm starting a new game like this, I'm trying to go with save that has high production. Uh, but let's start with Assyrians. We'll go through all of the options. So Assyrians uh, have, and you always have one like special ability, then you have one special, let's say tile improvement, and then you have your special unit. Uh, so here Assyrians are focused on warfare, so if you want to read the details you can do that, but uh, it's not really that important, at least at this point. Babylonians, again, you can pause the game here. Uh, I'll just go through their basics, like what their focus is, and you can see that they are science focused safe. That is their unique unit, Spearmen. Then Egyptian, Egyptians, we're gonna be playing as Egypt, so we'll check that in more detail in a second. Harapons, 
our food focus or growth focus sev it is another warmonger kind of <clears throat> mycenians uh again a different approach to warmongering basically cheaper units here um uh, cyclopean fortress that's a lot of reading for mycenians then we have nubians money focus and uh, some fate as well uh i think this is the only save that has any kind of fate focus this early later you can uh, you can switch into this they are much more focused on fate but i'm not sure if for this era there is anyone else who has some extra faith maybe the olmax yeah these guys also have some faith and influence so these are like um uh, the religious expansionists basically phoenicians money trading and show stability science i really like the stability focus here because um sometimes it's a problem to keep your cities stable your people happy uh, maybe it's because i don't fully understand that mechanic so getting extra stability from basically anything is very valuable and here it comes for free so this might be the save that i'm gonna play the uh, play as the first one after full release but right now i said we're gonna be playing as egyptian so we are grand planners plus one industry on district producing industry so any district that gives in uh, that gives industry gives us plus one and production cost modifier minus 10 percent uh, the unlock action buyout on empire we just can't rush production with gold that's what it means our special tile improvement or special uh special district are egyptian pyramids these are not the big pyramids the world wonder uh, those are also in the game and um, if we decide to unlock them we can do them we can do it we can build them but it's not the same thing this is just tile improvement we can build mul multiple of these uh the big uh, pyramids the world wonder those can be built only once and we have to unlock them later for influence i think so here we get plus two industry on the tile plus one influence per adjacent makers quarter uh so if we build uh like a production focused district next to the pyramids it will be getting us like scaling influence and um, on city outpost this what does this mean is that the city that builds the pyramids will have one extra slot for a worker and its stability will be reduced by five that's the thing about these tile improvements with every tile improvement that you build its stability drops by five so you can't just go crazy on growing your cities wide because then the stability will just plummet so i have to be careful with that you can't just spam districts um uh, and then we have our unique unit the markabata unique chariot you can see the description you can see the details uh it looks pretty strong 25 strength with six movement yeah that sounds good okay so here we're gonna adapt egyptians and confirm ah the challenges of a young civilization it's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. So we just progressed into the ancient era from the Neolithic. So now we can finally start founding cities. Um, 
here the map is divided into regions. You can see the border of the region here. This wide, these white lines. And uh, you can only have one city in each, re in each region. When you settle in the region, it's yours. And um, you have to settle the other cities in different regions. Uh, this is a mechanic that I usually don't like. I like the freedom that you have in the Civ. But it works this way. Sure, we, we can go with it. <clears throat> See how it works. So... Um, some tiles, as you can see, have special resources. We, for example, have horses here. Um, we have luxury resources. I'm not sure if you can see anything like that on the map that we currently did. Oh, we can. Here, there is, for example, saffron. So those are luxury luxuries. Then we have strategic resources like horses. So that's similar to civilization. And, of course, uh, it's great if you get, can get control over these early. Uh, so what are we gonna do? I think I'm gonna settle here because I want to have. If I settle, wait, if I settle here, wouldn't it be better? It might be better to settle here actually, like right next to the horses. And then we're gonna build uh, a farmers district here, and we're gonna build. Um, Makers, I think that's how it's called. Makers dis district here. Districts basically like soak the appropriate yields from tiles that are next to them. So with the with the farmers district here, I'm gonna soak the food from these two tiles. With the makers district here, I'm gonna soak the production from here, and I'm gonna build another makers district here to soak up all of this production something something like that and of course we're gonna build or we all have the horses right next to the city so we'll be able to improve them early now how does founding cities work so when you want to found a city first you need to get an outpost this is basically how you uh gain control or say that i'm interested in this territory as long as you the way I understand it, as long as you have an outpost in a territory, no one else can get a uh, get an outpost in the same territory. Having an outpost somewhere doesn't mean that you necessarily have to develop the outpost into the city. As long as you control a territory with an outpost, you can always change your mind, pack up your things and move out of there if you change your mind. Or the other option is to develop the outpost into the city. So here we know that we want to make this a city. So we start here, found outpost. It takes two turns for the outpost to be fully developed. So we have to wait and in two turns that's when we can uh, when we can change it into a city. Now, our hunting parties don't really have anything to do. I could probably attack the mammoth here, but I would rather attack mammoths with the other group that has three hunting, hunting parties, so instead we'll just explore a little bit more, try to find some more uh, curiosities. Or uh, some more like potential city locations, and uh, well, before we get to next turn, actually, there is one more thing. There is now when we can uh, found cities, we get the access uh, to research. So now we can start researching stuff, and here we can just open the technology screen. Um, Pretty much the same thing as civilization, honestly. Uh, and in the, these types of forex games, what else would you expect? Calendar, domestication, irrigation, blah blah blah. We have seen this <clears throat> before. Because of our uh, starting location, I think I want to go with domestication so that we can improve the horses. Also, that will unlock animal barns, which are not districts, these are buildings in the city and it will give us food from horses. So I think that's what I want to go for because of the starting location specifically. So let's unlock that. This tells us how long it's going to take to uh, develop the technology. We can jump out 
And before we end the turn, let's talk a little bit about what changed. So, uh, for that we're gonna jump into an Empire screen. Here, the, this, these are our fame points. These are the points that uh, we need to collect in order to win the game. So, you can see the ladder. We are currently first with 20 points. You can check this at any point and the way I understand it, in the end, who is first on this ladder wins. Then, when we check the Empire screen, to progress from this era to the next one, we once again have to collect these stars and we get these stars by like fulfilling different goals. It's here. Um, each culture, let's say, has a different focus. We are builders, so we are getting more fame for like building achievements, builder stars. If we get six districts, we unlock the first level of the builder star. So we will get one star filled here. And uh, as you can see, for the others, we get 100 points. Here we get 110 points because of our focus. Then the next option, expansionist, uh, control certain amount of territories, get certain amount of influence, population, gold, technologies or destroy a certain amount of military units. And each of these goals has three levels. So we can either do a little bit of each, or we can focus on specific ones, because for each level you get a star. So when we get, uh, I don't know, five territories, we get a star. If we then get 10 territories, it's gonna fill another star. Uh, usually, it's pretty easy to go for tags because you are researching those anyways. So just pick up uh, some like cheap tags and get multiple stars. If you are rushing the next era, just pick up stars here, which you can do pretty quickly and just rush the next era. Mm. So this is a way how to progress to the, to the next, uh, next era and how to get some uh, fame because you are getting uh, both the stars and fame at the same time from these. Uh, and then we have, these are just other cultures currently, there are no other cultures, we are the first one to get out of Neolithic era. And then there are competitive deeds, one-time things that also give fame, and these are kind of like achievements. Uh, be the first to do something most of the time, or, or control something, explore something, and when someone reaches the goal or achieves whatever uh, is required, you get the fame, you get this deed, and no one else can get it. So get uh, access to all strategic luxury resources, build a wonder, things like that. So that's another another source of fame. And I think this list grows as you are progressing through the game. And I also think there's, think there are some hidden deeds that you can't even see. Uh, not sure about that, but sometimes it feels that way. Is there anything else that I want to talk about here? Probably not. I just wanted to show how you progress further. Can we see? No. These are the different eras. Currently we have one, two, three, four, four eras or five with Neolithic. And in the end, it seems that there will be two more eras in the game. They're just, I guess. Um, okay, so let's get out of here. Is there anything else that we want to check right now? Here is our special ability as builder or building, uh, building focused empire. We have the ability to send our cities into industry mode. And that basically means that for a certain amount of time, all our money and indust uh, and uh, science will be all converted into industry. So we can build stuff much faster at the cost of gold and science. Okay. So now we can finally end the turn, I think. Because we found it an outpost, the game tells us that we basically gained population this way. Population is different from these numbers. This is not population, these are units. So the population is what's inside of the outpost. Uh, okay, that's that. You guys can go probably hunting now. So we show combat. Uh, it's not auto resolve, so here we confirm that we want to fight the mammoth. 
So you can see the mammoth moved. Now we have to prepare our units for battle. I can't attack from this tile because we are basically on top of a black plateau and we can't attack down with melee unit. If we had an archer, I think we would be able to attack with an advantage from there. This is a deployment phase, so we're gonna end it. Now the AI can adjust. Uh, so the mammoth moved a little bit and now we move again. So there is zone of control, but we have enough movement to move behind the mammoth. So that all units can get into position. Now we can attack and here we can see how much damage we take, how much damage the target takes, and all of the details. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, as we progress, I think we unlock things like advantage when you are flanking, uh, advantage when you're attacking from behind, advantage when you're attacking from high ground, things like that. Uh, we should be able to... Uh, to unlock as we progress through the game so the combat should become more and more complex uh, as you progress through the game. Um, I'll see if there is any difference. I don't think that... actually here there is a... oh there is already the flanking bonus because we have two units next to us we do more damage. Okay fine let's, so let's start it with this guy. Attack I'm not sure if we can even kill the mammoth now. Probably not. He's gonna survive on like one hit point. And all of our units attack. Now it's time for the AI. It's gonna attack, die, and here we have the the summary. So the unit died. We lost some hit points, but gained gold. Uh, basically, we killed the creature or hunted the creature, and I guess sold the meat, sold the hide, things like that. So that's uh, that, 40 gold, very useful. <clears throat> At this point, we don't get more units by picking up food. Picking up food is not a thing anymore. It's converted into gold. If we want to get more units, we have to train them in cities. <clears throat> Let's do it. So keep going. Uh, which way? Let's go Off here. Another mammoth, and I probably shouldn't have moved this way because now I can't go down. Let's go. This is another strategic, I think, resource. It's copper. I think I'm actually gonna move here. I kind of want a city next to the copper. Follow me. Let's do that. Next turn. And can we? Get the city now next turn. So what do we have here? You can move. I'm not hundred percent sure how healing works in this game. I'm not sure if you just automatically heal a few points every turn. I think that's how it is. But I'm not hundred percent sure about that yet. Uh, can we hunt down this mammoth? Let's find out. Now we don't have a movement anymore, but we are next to the the creature. So can we? Initiate combat. Yes, we can. Let's do that then. Oh, by the way, there is an option for auto combat. In some cases, for example, if you were to hunt uh, hunt a deer at this point, you just want to do this, would want to do that as quickly as possible, so you can uh, auto resolve. But here, I'm just gonna do it manually. Confirm. Uh, deploy, and it's gonna move. And now we should have an advantage because we are on the high ground. So as you can see, a plus four from being on the high ground. And as you can see, this is just high ground. This is not a cliff. So even melee units can take advantage from that. If we had a unit here, because this is a cliff, we wouldn't be able to attack. But this would be a great tile for a ranged unit. So uh, I think this unit has the highest strength, so let's start with that. And finish it. There we go. So that was an easy hunt. Another 40 gold. On the other side, let's go 
here. I'm not sure how much influence we need for the second city, if it's 20 or 30. I think it's 30. And turn. And there we go. Now the outpost is fully developed. And uh, if we changed our mind, we could just pack our things, move somewhere else. Um, that's outpost relocation. That's one option. Then there's the other option to develop a full city. So we're gonna do that. And there was something else that I wanted to say. Oh, right. Uh, why would you want to pack up uh, the things and move somewhere else? Sometimes you just want to uh, basically claim a territory temporarily so the AIs can't take it. Something along those lines. So sometimes it is useful to only have an outpost temporarily control the territory, but still have the option to move. So sometimes you just want to control the territory but can't afford a new city. Things like that. So don't always want to immediately do something with outposts. But in this case, we're gonna create a city. Because this is our capital, it will immediately turn into a city. With other cities, it takes some time to rebuild an outpost into a city. And it's a normal production thing, so it can be sped up by buying it. <clears throat> okay, convert it into a city. So here we go. And as you can see, a fully developed city doesn't only have food and uh, production, it also has gold and science. Now, uh, here is the city screen. So we can, uh, here, currently we have one population, so it can either be allocated to food production, industry, money, science, uh, all the kind of stuff. We have currently room only for two farmers, two workers, two, I don't know, traders, let's say, and two scientists. Uh, these change as we develop the city. Uh, it's possible to change like focus of the city here. Uh, that's how the game is gonna be automatically like allocating citizens. But when you play these kinds of games, especially on higher difficulty, you want to do that manually. <clears throat> Here we have stability. There is some description. So currently we know that uh, the stability is going to stay at 55% until we change something. And the, the city is stable kind of as long as it's between 30 and 90%. So we don't have to worry. But this number can change pretty drastically. But at least the game tells you what's currently going on. Right now it's telling us it's 55 and it's going to stay 55. When something changed... The game tells you you have a uh, stability of i don't know 55 but it will go down throughout the next few turns until it hits 25 so you know or the game tells you how the situation is going to develop with the next few turns so if you are paying attention you should know in time that something is going wrong and try to do something about it. The thing is, you can't always do something. That That's... I, I don't fully understand why sometimes stability drops drastically. Uh, so it's quite unpredictable. But I guess I'm just missing something obvious that I'll figure out eventually. Here we have growth. Uh, I will have to figure this out as well, because it's not as easy as just, like, locking more farmers, for example, producing more food to speed things up. Uh, most of the time, it seems like it works that way, but sometimes when you focus more on food, this doesn't change. So there is probably something else to it. I'll have to read through more of the tooltips, I guess, to fully understand. Mm. What else do we have here? The rest is pretty self-explanatory. I'm uh, not sure... All oh, right, we can uh, trade population for resources here. Didn't even know that. But, well, there is the option. And here we have buildings and districts and units that we can currently build. Also ceremonies that's like one-time things. Uh, we invest 100 production, we get 5 food, and we can do this uh, as many times as we want. Mm, we don't have any buildings currently. We have a scout that we don't want to build. And then we have districts. So these are the tile improvements that are 
placed on the map. First, I want to do farmer's market. This will increase this number by one. And just improve the, the amount of food that we are basically getting around the tile or on the tile where we build it. So I want to build it here. We are already getting food from this tile. So the farmer's market doesn't drain the food from here. It drains the food from these two tiles. Uh, so let's do that. It will give us plus five food on this tile. And it takes eight turns to build. We would have to pay 98 gold if we wanted to finish it immediately. But every turn this goes down. So in like one or two turns we want to pay. We almost have the money. And then immediately start working on the maker's quarters. Um, is there anything else to explain about the city? Probably not. At least not at this point. Oh, there is one more thing. There's a thing called administrators. We can see it here. We currently have one administrator available. And um, basically administrators are like mayors. If you want to have your cities working well, uh, if you want your cities stable, you want them to have administrators. It doesn't mean that you can't have more cities, but from what I've experienced so far, an administrate city is pretty unstable and like generally worse than cities that have administrators uh, you can get administrators later as you develop more text social policies more civics i think that's how they called here um you can get more cities than the amount of administrators you have you just have to be careful so this is basically like a mechanic that holds you back a little bit you can't just go crazy on expansion and uh, only basically be limited by influence because influence if you focus on influence production you can get quite a lot so you'd be able to expand super rapidly but uh, if you don't have administrators for such a rapid a rapid expansion you would get into trouble mm, and i think that's all for this right now uh, what else? Let's check this. There's one more thing that I would like to show. I'm just not sure that we, uh, we should be able to see it from here. Excellent. So, what happened right now? We found a world wonder. Uh, for finding the world wonder, world natural wonder. Uh, we got the bonus. In this case, it was science, so that immediately gave us enough to finish domestication so we can lock new uh, new research there it is and it's uh, finding a world wonder qualifies as a world deed so by finding a great barrier reef uh, we got uh, 50 fame and at the same time because it was a great barrier reef we got extra science that unlocked the uh, the domestication and here you can see it. So you can see the whole description. So once again, world wonders, pretty damn powerful stuff. If you find one and can make it a part of your empire, you will feel the difference. So, let's get a little doubt. Here it is. As you can see, the yields on the tiles are nothing special, but as you can see, if you control the wonder, plus five influence, stability, money, you get a lot. And then you have just normal reefs, coral reefs, just an improvement for a specific tile that's here. Uh, so this is not the bad star. It has copper, it has the coral reefs, so quite a lot of science. And some of these tiles also have specialties here, Terra Rosa, which gives the plus three science to the tile. So this is a decent city location. I'll just have to decide if I want the city here or if I want to city somewhere else. So if I build a city here... Um, well, first of all, do we have enough? We do. The, the next city is 20, so we can do it. Just have to decide where. 12 plus 3 plus 5, 17 plus 2 plus 5. Uh, but I'll be right next to 
the border there. I think I want the outpost here. Because that will let me get this production faster. And I'll have ton of food because all of the all of the planes around. They'll be a little farther away from the coral reef, but hopefully that's fine. Yeah, I'm still not sure about the, the like the city locations. What exactly I'm supposed to be looking for. If I for example want to settle on top of these tiles they have something extra or if it's better to settle next to it. Oh well, let's settle here. And... It's gonna take six turns to develop the outpost. So as you can see, it takes a little bit longer than the previous one. But it's also because this location has like no production. <clears throat> So we want to get some production as soon as possible here. We're gonna build a maker's quarter here and steal the production from these two tiles. Otherwise, it's gonna take forever to build anything here. And once we are done with the outpost, I'm gonna pay for the development of the city. Uh, but for now, we are done with this. And here we could go hunt another mammoth. But I think... Are we gonna do that? Or can we do it now? We can't make it all the way there. Come over here. So I'll just run closer and we'll try to hunt him down next time. Fine. Uh, I think this is enough for this episode. So I hope that you liked it. I hope that you also like humankind. I have to say that for me so far it was a pleasant surprise. Uh, I didn't get like super far in the game. And often games can look really good for the early game, but then like there is not enough depth in the late game mechanics, things like that. Uh, so I can't say how the later eras look like, but from what I've seen, this game definitely has potential. So hopefully it won't disappoint. And yeah, we'll continue next time. So I hope that you like this episode. I hope that you're gonna join me next time again. And until then, have a good time. Bye-bye.